So first of all, nanotechnology refers to very, very small uh, substances or small particles. Um, you know, generally you might think of a, a nanoparticle, if you looked at its thickness, might be one one thousandth the thickness of a human hair. So it's incredibly small. But because it's so small, what that does is it imparts to whatever you're making all different types of new properties, like much greater surface area. Also in the medical area, because they're so small, cells can actually take up these small particles if you make them that way, and in contrast to large particles. So what that's done is it's, it's leading to new kinds of both therapies and diagnostics, and, and I'll give some examples of both. But in terms of therapies, one of the challenges that people have when they try to give a drug, let's say an anti-cancer drug, is it travels throughout the whole body, even though maybe you wanted to go to just one place, for example, a, a, a tumor or cancer. So if you could somehow take the drug, put it in a nanoparticle, and somehow allow the nanoparticle to circulate around and just find the tumor, that would be a great thing. People are working on that, we're working on that, but it's not easy. But some of the strategies that we and others are looking at are creating nanoparticles and then decorating their surface with this, just the right substances that can go through this, your body's remarkable maze, get through cells that might normally eat nanoparticles and, and decorate the surface so that it doesn't recognize those nanoparticles and then still find its way to the site you want, which is the tumor. So there's a lot of work going on on that. In fact, now there's actually even nanoparticles in human clinical trials for treating cancer. And the hope is, is that what's happening is that you can make the nanoparticles go just to the tumor, and, or at least largely to the tumor, and not to the rest of the body. So that's been an area of very, very active research, and, 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 and it's been exciting. Also, you could extend that. One of the things that people are doing, and that's very important for new drugs, are there, there are new, what I'll call genetic drugs, drugs like uh, siRNA that can turn genes off, or DNA or mRNA that could, say, turn genes on. But they also, those new molecules, one of the biggest impediments to getting them to be used right clinically is their delivery to the target cell. But again, one of the strategies that people are using are could you incorporate those molecules, the DNA or the siRNA and so forth, could you encapsulate them in nanoparticles? And could you direct that nanoparticle to go to just the cells you want, let's say the liver or, or some other cell type in the body? And by doing so, you can have all kinds of new medicines that are highly specific that can, like I say, shut genes off or maybe turn them on and treat different enzyme deficiency diseases and, and maybe other diseases. So I think nanotechnology in medicine is very, very important from a therapeutic standpoint. It can also be very important from a diagnostic standpoint. Right now, there's a number of diagnoses that, that people do. Let's say somebody has a, 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 a disease, bacterial infection or fungal infection. Right now, some of the tests that it takes to detect some of those infections might take up to five days, a really long time. And the problem with that is, is that if it takes a really long time, you might not know what the right medical treatment is for that person. So is there some way to do it faster? And again, that's where nanotechnology comes in. One thing that we've been involved with, along with some other colleagues, uh, is, is, is using nanotechnology to create new, what I'll call um, NMR systems. And what you can do is create little magnetic nanoparticles, decorate their surface with something that could detect whatever it is that you want. And what'll happen is, is when those nanoparticles, is when those nanoparticles see something that what you've detect, what you've put on their surface recognize, they will aggregate and you get a certain type of T2 signal. That's the NMR signal. And that'll be very different than what happens if it doesn't recognize it. But the beauty of it being nano, in this case, is that the surface area is so great. So whatever signal you get, it gets amplified tremendously because the surface area is so great. So you have the ability to diagnose things much, much more rapidly. So right now there are tests going on at T2 Biosystems and other places, but what you can do is with nanotechnology, which I think will change the future, is get these ultra rapid diagnostics that will in turn 
tell you what types of drug therapies to use for different situations. Nanotechnology can be used in other areas too. It can be used in uh, developing new patterns, um, which cells could, uh, uh, which could affect cell behavior, so it might be useful in medical devices that, that, that people might make. So it ends up being a very broad area that can have, have huge impact on, on a whole host of different medical problems. Well, I think there's a number of, new, of challenges in nanotechnology, depending on what problem one wants to solve. But you have to be able to manufacture these nanoparticles. You have to be able to, if you're using them in medicine, for many cases, therapeutically, you have to do it sterily. If you're trying to deliver new molecules like uh, siRNA or DNA, th those are not so easy to encapsulate uh, always. And also, there are challenges in getting the right targeting, getting them to target to the right cells in the body. So there's a range of, 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 of challenges that people need to overcome. We're trying to, our goal is to try to get these to the point, these systems to the point where they're really being widely used on people. And I think we just don't know all the challenges yet. You know, in some of the cases, we've done some human trials for certain diseases, in others we haven't. So I think we have to work through what the right issues are, and that has to be done on a disease by disease basis. But right now, I think the technologies are at the point where, you, where human clinical trials are ongoing. And I think we'll see more and more of that over the next uh, 10, 20 years. So, for example, in, in, in cancer, you might want to deliver a drug like Taxotere. Uh, Taxotere is a good cancer drug, but if it travels throughout the whole body, you can get medical problems like neutropenia and so forth. But if you could target it right to the tumor, say a lung tumor or a prostate cancer tumor, then you probably wouldn't get the neutropenia. You could give more of it, and hopefully you would be able to eliminate the tumor. These are theoretical at this point, but those are the kinds of clinical trials that are going on. Anything in medicine takes a long time. You have to go through what's called phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials. And even before that, you have to do animal trials. So I expect it'll, to really move these along it'll take at least five years. You know, I think that there's a lot of research that needs to be done, and then a lot of studies in human beings. Uh, so I think, it'll take, I think it'll take some time. And of course, not everything always works right the first time, so you may need to repeat experiments and so forth. So our, our laboratory is working on a number of problems uh, related to medical nanotechnology. One is can we get high yields of drug encapsulated in the nanoparticles? Two. Can we create nanoparticles that will be very specifically targeted to specific cell types, like say prostate cancer? Three, can we uh, put more complex drugs like siRNA or mRNA or DNA in them? Four, can we demonstrate this, that they work in animal models? And five, can we work with people, clinicians and companies to show that they work in human models? So nanotechnology can also be used uh, for vaccines. Uh, one of the other things we've worked on with a company called Selecta Biosystems is creating nanoparticles that you can direct to what are called immune presenting cells. So that, and, and you might be able to example, to have those vaccines to prevent cigarette smoking or uh, other diseases, cancer vaccines and so forth. So nanotechnology could be useful not only for therapy, but also for disease prevention through the use of, of nanoparticle vaccines. I think it's early to know whether there are risks or not. With any new medical therapy, there are always risks. Sometimes the chemicals you use are risky. I don't think there's anything inherently risky about nanotechnology, but I think any new concept, there's some risk. Well, I think what's been exciting about nanotechnology is there's a lot of new principles of material science, uh, where people might understand better how to create the right materials for nanoparticles, how one might be able to create the right surfaces. I also think that there's a lot we can understand about the interface of, of materials and nanoparticles with biology, with animals, with cells, with the human body. So I think there's a tremendous amount of basic science with, in terms of material science in and of itself, and then material science combined with biology and physiology. So I think there's a great deal to learn.